Have you ever seen a skyscraper that can change its shape? The creators of the FNF Tower in Panama City had a concept and only $50 million, which isn't a lot in skyscraper money. So they couldn't afford a mistake, and they finished a concrete structure with the 39 upper floors rotating 9 degrees around an axis from the first attempt without spending any extra time or materials. Dubai's rotating tower will look different every time you see it once it's finished. Each of its 80 floors will rotate 360 degrees individually around the center of the building. The lucky residents will be able to control that rotation, which means they can choose their view from the window. A complete lap should take about 90 minutes. And no, the tower won't be a huge waste of electricity. It will produce its own energy. Wind turbines between the floors will drive the rotations. If you've ever wanted to live inside a video game, book an apartment in the King Power Mahana Khan building. This pixelated skyscraper around the height of the Eiffel Tower is the tallest building in Thailand. The secret behind its looks is the horizontally and vertically divided glass windows. It took five years to finish this beauty with over 200 apartments, a hotel, luxury shops, restaurants, and one of the most breathtaking viewpoints in the world. The Libyan International Building features one of the world's tallest artificial waterfalls running right down its side. No worries, they only turn it on on special occasions, and it uses a mix of recycled tap water and rainwater. When it started running for the first time, the non-informed locals even reported a huge water leak. The Cyber Texture Office Building in Mumbai looks like a huge egg made of glass and steel. It was actually inspired by a vessel that, like our planet, has its own ecosystem. To bring down the heat levels inside, the architects chose the ideal orientation and added sun shading and an underground cooling system. The Marina Bay Sands in Singapore seems like a Stonehenge look-alike, but its architect claims that he was inspired by a house of cards. The horizontal one is balanced on the three vertical ones, they are three 55-story hotels with restaurants, nightclubs, gardens, shops, museums, and movie theaters. The horizontal card is an infinity swimming pool with the best view of the city for up to 4,000 visitors. The pool hangs at the height of the 57th floor, and it feels like nothing is holding it. The dancing house definitely stands out among the more traditional architecture in Prague. The nickname for the house is Fred and Ginger. The stone tower symbolizes the famous dancer Fred Astaire, and the glass tower, his partner, Ginger Rogers. There's even imaginary hair on top of Fred's tower. 99 concrete panels support the dancing shape, all of them of different dimensions. Umeda Sky Building, twice the height of Big Ben, consists of two towers of glass and steel to the north of Osaka Station. The floating garden observatory connects the towers on top. Although the building is in a huge city, the skywalk is so high in the clouds that the only thing you'll hear up there is the wind. If you're scared of heights, you can visit an urban garden, a theater, an art museum, or one of the many offices closer to the ground inside the building. Architect Octavio Mendoza owns probably the largest piece of pottery in the world. If you're ever in Colombia, ask the locals for directions to the Flintstone House. Yes, they call it that for a reason. The official name is Casa Terracotta, and the architect only used clay to build it. He let it bake and harden in the sun, which transformed the pliable material into solid ceramic. Every curve of the building is designed after the surrounding hills. All the furniture inside is also made of clay. Mendoza is determined to work on the casa for the rest of his life. Artists Dennis Sullivan and Francis Conklin have been saving money for 15 years, carving smaller wooden dogs to create their dream project. The Dog Bark Park Inn in Cottonwood is a 12-foot beagle that stands proud in the Idaho prairie. There is a bedroom and a living area in its body and an extra bedroom in the head. Have you ever wondered what it's like to be inside a huge carpet? Eh, me neither. But checking out the Azerbaijan National Carpet Museum is definitely worth it anyway. 
It shows the history of this important local craft in every detail. Austrian architect Franz Jans designed the construction, and it took six years to finish it. The basket building in Ohio looks exactly like a real shopping basket, except it's 160 times larger. It even has two attached handles. The building served as the headquarters of Longa Burger Basket Company, then was sold to become a luxury hotel. A giant whale? An airship? Can you guess what's inside this building in Graz, Austria? Two British architects won the Europe-wide competition to design this art museum. The biomorphic construction has around 1,000 acrylic glass elements on its skin. During the night, it can send light signals and messages to people on the other side of the river. It takes in daylight from the north through nozzles on its top. The needle is a viewing platform. The Half House in Toronto, Canada was built in the late 19th century and was one of six identical houses standing next to each other. When developers came to this area, the owners of all the other houses agreed to move. And this one wouldn't go. A demolition crew showed some impressive skills as they managed to tear down the neighboring house without doing any damage at all to what is now the half house. The white exterior wall used to be load-bearing, dividing the neighbors' bedrooms and living rooms. One wrong move of the excavator, and the entire construction would become ruins. The Shell House in Isla Mujeres, Mexico, stands by the ocean, was inspired by the ocean, and looks like one of the ocean's symbols. The house is shell-shaped and covered with shells from nearby beaches. Architect Eduardo Ocampo designed this beauty as he wanted to have a one-of-a-kind house for his brother to come and visit more often. Now it's up for rent for vacationers. The Bubble Palace, not far away from Cannes in France, was designed by a Hungarian architect and purchased by Pierre Cardin. In case you have a couple of spare million, you can buy this interesting property. You'll get 10 bedroom suites decorated by contemporary artists, gardens, water ponds, a swimming pool, and a 500 seat outdoor auditorium with an awesome view of the Bay of Cannes as a bonus. Can you find one house standing straight here? I know, I also failed. All the cubes in the cube house in Rotterdam are tilted 45 degrees at their side. The idea here was to make the most of the space. Dutch architect Piet Blom designed the houses in the late 70s to look like an abstract forest. Each triangular roof represents a treetop. The houses stand at three floors tall with an entrance on the ground floor, an open kitchen, and a living room on the first floor, as well as a bathroom with two bedrooms on the top floor. The Boot in Tasman, New Zealand is a hotel that looks like it comes straight out of a children's book. It even has legit shoelaces. There's a spiral staircase, cozy fireplace, kitchenette, and a bedroom with a balcony. If you ever find yourself in Mitchell, South Dakota, be sure not to miss out on their key tourist attraction, the Corn Palace. The locals have always been so proud of prairie gold that they first built a palace out of corn back in 1892 to prove to the rest of the world how fertile their lands are. What you can see now is the rebuilt version. Every year, they put new corn in 13 shades to form new beautiful murals. Well, looky here. It's New York City, the Big Apple, the city that never sleeps, Hong Kong on the Hudson, the greatest city in the world, New York, New York, the city so nice they named it twice. All right, I'll stop. You thought you knew this city so well, but underneath all that glitz and glamour is a facade, literally. New York is populated with some of the most iconic urban buildings in the world and home to some of the most unique and famous towers. Who would have known that New York was a front for fake buildings? And the cool thing is that there are plenty to search for. Okay, I'm adding that to my bucket list. So the question is, why do they put these fake buildings all over New York? The city is one of the most vibrant places in the world and requires many infrastructures to keep the city in motion. That means having many industrial structures and buildings in every major district. New York is charming for the design and the buildings. Imagine having industrial structures right next to your favorite pizza parlor or hot dog stand. 
the designers thought ahead and decided to disguise those industrial infrastructures as fake buildings. They blend with the city so well that they don't stand out. They look like your good old apartment or housing unit with a front door, real-life windows, and even charming balconies where people would hang out. The only thing is that there's nothing behind the facade and no one is allowed inside. So where in the world can you find these fake buildings? For starters, one of the most popular fake buildings is in Brooklyn. At 58 Giralamont Street, you can find a very typical neighborhood. But between the buildings stands a brick building with a slightly deeper shade than the rest. It has bright open windows that blend in with the rest of the buildings in the neighborhood, except that they're blacked out. At first glance, you might not think of it as anything. But if you pay close attention, the building looks like a glitch from a video game. It was built in 1847, way before New York was considered glamorous. Originally, it was meant to be a regular building, but in 1908, they converted it into a fake building. Don't think you can just try to break in. Even if you could, it's pointless, because it's part of a ventilation fan for the subway. It also serves as an emergency exit for some of the surrounding buildings. Actually, throughout New York, many fake buildings exist to disguise the subway vents for the smoke to escape. All the way to 415 Bruckner Boulevard, the Bronx, this townhouse was designed by the Switzer Group, which is an interior architect company. It's not as charming as the one at 58 Jura Lemon Street, but it serves a similar purpose – to hide an electric substation for New York's utility company. The city needs these substations to reduce the high-voltage electricity to a lower voltage so it can be distributed locally. Having a building like this popping out of the middle of your neighborhood isn't exactly the smartest way to attract people to the Bronx. That's why the fake townhouse facade is the perfect camouflage. Now, some of these fake buildings don't really hit the mark and stick out like a sore thumb. The people of Manhattan describe the Mulry Square infrastructure as a complete clunker. After plenty of redesigns and back-to-the-drawing-board meetings, the result is still not pretty. The locals compare it to a concrete box. They created windows without glass, which doesn't allow the building to blend in with the rest of the neighborhood. But it beats a typical subway ventilation plant either way. There are just so many places to visit and cross off your bucket list. But if you live in China, you can literally stay in the country and visit many iconic cities around the world. The replica cities began when the Chinese economy started booming in the early 90s. They wanted the lifestyle of the rich and famous without wanting to leave their country. They can be comfortable eating their local food and get the feeling of being abroad. The Chinese province of Guangdong has an identical copy of the historical Australian alpine village Hallstatt. The real Hallstatt is centuries old and one of the most charming places to discover. The local people of Hallstatt also had no idea that their home was being built in China. Some people thought that this was controversial, probably because it cost around $940 million to build it. Paris is undoubtedly one of the most charming cities you could ever visit. Its rich history and vibrant culture are enough to catch the first plane to go there. For residents of Tian du Cheng, that's something they can do anytime they want. The city is also known as Sky City and has a replica of the Eiffel Tower that looks eerily like the iconic one in Paris and built buildings to match the city's visual charm. One of the main things that will break the charm is the farmland surrounding the city. There's barely anyone there, and the streets are always empty, very un-Paris-like. Still, you can find some nice fountains and statues scattered along the streets to give it some spirit. There's laundry hung everywhere, even on the trees. The picturesque fountains are dry and many apartments are empty. Only a few stores are open for business. Even though this looks like a fake city, it's quite real. Some people live here because it's more affordable than other places. Two hours away from this town is another version of Paris's Pont Alexandre III and a carbon copy of London's Tower Bridge, but with four towers instead of two. Hey, such a bargain! You can also visit the closest thing to Italy, but this time you can go shopping. Florentia Village is an outlet mall that offers an array of shops to lose yourself. The good thing is that this was built by an Italian developer to capture the essence of an Italian village. 
It has fountains, canals, and mosaics for proper aesthetics. It began in 2011 and has more than 200 shops with many Italian brands and British, US, and Chinese brands as well. The place is so popular that it gets between 10,000 and 25,000 visitors per day. China also has other replica towns that put you in a mini Manhattan called the Yuzhipu Financial District. The developer's goal was to make this place the financial center of the world. It was complete with the right landmarks, like the Rockefeller and Lincoln Centers, but the project was halted in 2019, leaving it mainly empty. You can find a typical English town with cobbled streets, Victorian homes, and restaurants that make Thames Town. This place was meant to recreate a European lifestyle fantasy without leaving Shanghai. China also has a Dutch town that has some elements of Amsterdam with windmills and famous canals. They even decided to copy some of the landmarks, like the Netherlands Maritime Museum. Here's a bonus story of Lebanon's thinnest building built out of a dispute. It's the story of two brothers who both inherited unequal plots of land. One of the brothers happened to get a very thin plot of land and couldn't help but be jealous of his brother's nice plot of land. He wasn't pleased. Both of the lands overlooked the Mediterranean Sea in a lively neighborhood of Beirut. So it's no wonder that both brothers couldn't agree on how they should develop their lands. It was obvious that the brother with the most land could build a proper building. The other brother had to improvise. He decided to obstruct his brother's property by constructing a thin building enough to only fit 14 feet at its widest and 2 feet at its most narrow. It was constructed in 1954, and the locals of the area know it as the Grudge. The crazy thing is that the place was once habitable with many visitors enjoying their stay. It's not easy to live there, but it's part of living the experience. The building is still standing, but is empty. You've just reached your perfect spot on a deserted beach. It's so quiet here that you start to doze off. But as you open your eyes, you are shocked. Wait a minute. Is that an actual house that's just been washed up on the shore? It may sound like the beginning of a sci-fi novel, but not if you live near this beach in El Salvador. There's a mysteriously abandoned house there that looks as if it's just been washed ashore. How did this villa end up there? How long has it been here without anyone noticing it? This mysterious construction is 46 miles south of El Salvador's capital, San Salvador. Locals say the building used to be a hotel called Puerto Ventura. At the time it was built, its main attraction was the fact that it was really close to the sea. Unfortunately, the engineering behind it wasn't well planned out. All because locals didn't need any official permission to start the construction. The hotel was too close to the water and dangerously exposed to the elements. The Roman-style villa is now a mere 50 feet from the edge of the sea when the tide is low. It can only be accessed in the morning, because later, the tides fill the first floor with salt water. What's now left of the hotel looks like the ruins of a two-story house. The front part is very impressive, with Roman-type pillars. It also has wide windows on the second floor. You can still see parts of the iron structures and remains of what used to be the gateway to the second floor. There are some bleachers at the top of the building. They are sometimes used by tourists. More and more people are now browsing the area, taking photos, even though the building is obviously not safe for climbing. There's little information on how long it's been sitting in its current location, but some locals say it's been there for at least 20 years. It had remained a local secret for years, before it was discovered by a TikTok user in 2021. But that doesn't answer the question, how did the hotel end up in another location altogether? This is where things become a little fuzzy. While some locals say that the building was abandoned decades ago, others claim it was deserted after Hurricane Mitch hit the area back in 1998. Hurricane Mitch was one of the most dangerous weather phenomena to ever hit Central America. During the storm, the winds traveled at 178 miles per hour, and the hurricane itself lasted for about 15 hours. It was also the cause of a huge amount of rainfall, which resulted in floods and many dangerous landslides. Being built so close to the shoreline, the former hotel had little chance of surviving the extreme weather conditions. So, 
it must have been literally displaced. After sitting under the sun, you might start dreaming of some snowballs getting washed ashore. You know, to even out the temperature. I'm not kidding. This strange natural phenomenon did happen back in 2016. It resulted in about 11 miles of the coast of the Gulf of Ob in West Siberia getting covered with huge snowballs. Because of the low temperatures, small pieces of ice started to form in the water. Afterward, the wind and waves rolled them into giant snowballs. Some of them were the size of a tennis ball, but others were up to three feet wide. A 2004 Harley-Davidson night train motorcycle popped up ashore on a British Columbia beach back in 2012. It was neatly packed inside a shipping container. It took some time to do it, but the owner was eventually traced down. His name was Ikuyo Yokoyama, and he lost his motorcycle after a tsunami struck Japan on March 11, 2011. To get to its final destination, the Harley-Davidson traveled more than 4,000 miles. To celebrate its long journey, Yokoyama donated the bike to the Harley-Davidson Museum in Milwaukee. It's been on display there ever since, in case you want to visit. This strange phenomenon made it look as if someone spilled dish soap all over the beach. But it does happen pretty often in Queensland. Sea foam covers the shore there a couple of times each year. It mostly happens after a storm, when ocean waves move dissolved organic matter around. It's basically like a giant ice cream maker. After Cyclone Debbie back in March of 2017, some beaches actually needed to be closed because of huge amounts of white foam. The wind even brought some of that foam to the nearby towns, making locals believe it was snowing. Would you be surprised to see a 6 by 6 foot rusty metal die washed ashore on your local beach? Because back in 2017, people in Coeur d'Alene in Idaho sure were. It turned out to be an old storage tank. Someone decided to spice it up a bit by adding some white spots to make it look like a dye. In 1992, thousands of rubber duckies got stranded at sea after a large container ship that was transporting them was hit by a wave. As you can imagine, the ducks started popping up all over the world in Hawaii, Alaska, South America, Australia, in Europe, and even in the Arctic. It's estimated that a couple hundred of those unlucky rubber ducks are still out there. Interestingly, they turned out to be very useful to scientists. Based on their movements, researchers can monitor the direction of water currents. If you happen to like dinosaurs, you'll be happy to know seawaters can also bring ashore some fossils. In 2018, a large dinosaur jawbone ended up on the coast of Lilstock Beach in Somerset, England. It used to belong to a dinosaur called Ichthyosaurus. Thanks to this finding, scientists were able to make an impressive discovery. Before, they thought the Ichthyosaurus could reach a maximum length of about 69 feet. But after they studied the jawbone, they ended up recalculating the creature's size. They concluded that the Ichthyosaurus could grow up to 85 feet. The Megalodon was the largest predator in our planet's history. It lived almost all over the globe, except near the poles. How do we know that? because megalodon teeth keep appearing on beaches every now and then. One staggering megalodon tooth, which was way over 20 inches long, was discovered in a river in Croatia. Since these creatures have been extinct for about 3 million years, their teeth are highly prized by fossil hunters. A giant Lego man that washed ashore is something I never thought I'd hear about. And it turns out it didn't happen just once. There were four of these giant Lego men in total, each around 8 feet tall. One was found in England and one in the Netherlands, while the other two popped up in Florida and California. It was surely not a coincidence, and after some research, people found out that a Dutch artist was behind this. Ego Leonard started this project as a personal statement campaign. A short film was even made about this, and it was called No Real Than You Are. This sentence was written on each of the four Lego men put to sea. A bundle of over 50 letters was washed ashore in New Jersey on a beach in Atlantic Highlands back in 2012. It happened shortly after Hurricane Sandy had struck the area. A 14-year-old boy found the letters and gave them to his mom. She was so touched by them that she decided to carefully dry and return them to their owner. The letters were the correspondence of two people named Dorothy and Lynn. 
They were dated between 1942 and 1948. The last was written a week before their wedding. With the help of an online genealogy site, the woman reached Dorothy and returned the letters to the 88-year-old woman who was living in a retirement home.